Halo Infinite's next big update is almost here, and 343 have finally released their customization blog, overviewing some of the new cosmetics that we can expect in this upcoming update. The blog post opens up like they usually do, with an overview of some of the various cosmetic options that we'll be able to create as of this update. We see the Mark IV in all of its glory, alongside some of the new armor that we'll be getting in the Yappening and new Cyber Showdown events, alongside the armor set from the upcoming Spirit of Fire event and some various cross-core customization options, alongside the helmets from the Halo TV series being Kai's and Riz. It then of course mentions the trailer for the Spirit of Fire event that released earlier today. This isn't anything too special, it just shows us some of the cosmetic options that will be available in this event, and also obviously mentions cross-core shoulders, which is another thing we already knew about. The blog then gives us an overview of the Mark IV armor set, showing its debut in the first Halo Wars, an image of it in Halo Wars 2, its appearance in the Halo Legends series, and its appearance in Halo 5, showing how it has changed over the years. Although to be fair, its design has stayed pretty damn consistent. We then get an image of what it looks like in Infinite, and it is gorgeous. It's probably already the best armor core in the game. It just looks great. It's really nice to have some form of Halo Wars representation in a mainline Halo game. I know we did have it in Halo 5, but I don't think it looked anywhere near as good in 5 as it does here. And of course, the armor set is completely free. You will have this by default, and thanks to cross-core helmets and shoulders, it means you will have like nine different helmets and nine different sets of shoulders by default, which I think is pretty damn insane. We then have the Spirit of Fire event, which I did mention just, that is coming out tomorrow with the launch of the update. And in this, you get a free helmet, a free set of shoulder pads, a chest piece, some knee pads, I think maybe a utility piece, a coating, a vehicle coating, and a few other goodies. Again, all for free in what is shaping up to be a pretty nice little event pass. For 500 credits, you can get the purchase bonus, which is the classic Assault Rifle weapon model based on its appearance in Combat Evolved and Halo Wars 1. This also means that you will have permanent access to the event pass, so even if you don't complete it within its six week period, then you will still have plenty of time to get it finished as it's not going anywhere. Or if you'd prefer, you can pay 2000 credits, which gives you access to all of the items immediately alongside the purchase bonus. Although I don't see much of a point in this as the event is sticking around for quite some time, so you can unlock everything without needing to spend a penny. We then get an image of some of the new store bundles, these being based on Omega Team, with of course a set being based on Leon, Robert and August. It doesn't really give us much details about this store bundle, people are still a bit sceptical that these could be kits and I'm praying that they're not because the sets of armour themselves look amazing. I'm a big fan of the helmets, the shoulder pads, pretty much everything here, I want. I would assume they're going to be three separate armour sets in a super bundle, so it'll probably cost over 3,000 credits. I do not expect this to be cheap, but hopefully we can buy them individually if there is a specific set that you prefer over the others. We then get an image of the Stanchion weapon model for the S7, which is of course based on the weapon of the same name that has appeared in Halo Wars 2 and various other pieces of Halo Media. And this is a really good looking weapon model. This is also going to be released as a store item, and to be fair, I'm pretty excited for its release, and this is definitely one that I think I'll pick up. The blog then mentions both Cyber Showdown 3 and The Yappening 2, both events that we know are coming. Cyber Showdown 3 will release on March 5th and runs until April 2nd, which is when The Yappening will begin. Although it looks like this one won't last as long as it seems like it's only going to run from April 2nd to April 30th, although I think that is more than enough time to get everything unlocked. The next part mentions cross-core shoulders and shows us a few different combinations that we'll be able to create. This is a long-awaited feature for myself and many other fans, and again this means by default you will have so many customization options without needing to spend any money whatsoever, and when you throw in things like the free events, and the winter update pass which is still there and is still completely free you will have so many customization options and again you don't need to spend any money to make a good looking spawn which i think is amazing speaking of free options we're also getting the silver team helmet from kai vanik and riz with kai's releasing tomorrow as the event drops and you will have until the 6th of february to get this one followed by riz on week 2 which is from february 6th to february 13th and then Vanik on February 27th to March 5th. And my opinions on the show aside, I think all three of these helmets look really nice. I mean, Vanix is the one that I'm least interested in, as it is just EOD without the attachments. But you also get all three of their visors immediately, and these aren't ultimate rewards, these are just a free unlock, which means players who have no desire to spend any money on the game will have more than just one shade of visor to choose from, as you'll now have a gold, red one, and another green one for free. But to be fair, I do like these visors, so it's pretty cool to see they are just essentially a login bonus. 
The next part talks about some of the HCS stuff. Of course, we know that the HCS Season 1 bundles are returning to the store. Not all of them, as some of those teams are no longer partnered with Halo. However, the coatings are returning and will be cross-core coatings, not kits, which I think is great. And it also seems like this applies to the weapon coatings too, which is a very nice thing to have. Now, I didn't get any of these bundles originally, so it isn't one that I'm particularly too bothered about, but I know a few people that did, so I'm very happy for them. I'm very happy that it opens these up and they're no longer a kit. Although, to be fair, the Optic one is pretty nice, so maybe that's something I'll consider picking up. And then we do have the 2024 launch bundles too, which are the brand new sets of coatings, which again, are cross-core, and they come with a purchase bonus, which is the Draconic Weapon Model for the Bandit, and this looks insane. I know it's definitely something of an acquired taste, as it doesn't really mesh with Halo's typical art style, but I think as far as weapon models go, this is definitely one of the most interesting looking ones, so it might be something that I do consider. Anyway, that pretty much sums up the blog post. Honestly, there wasn't a lot that was spoken about that we didn't really know, so as a whole, I guess I would consider this a little bit disappointing. I was hoping maybe they would tell us that we're getting some new Cadet code coatings or maybe an announcement on what other items they're planning on making cross core if any and some clarification on whether or not the omega team stuff is going to be a kit or an actual set of armor would have also been nice but regardless i am still excited for this update and to spend about three hours in the customization menu modifying each individual core i'll probably once again spend more time in the menu than i will actually playing the game but anyway i'm curious to hear what you all think down in the comments thank you for watching i'll catch you all in the next one